Hey everybody, it's me, and I'm back. So, I've had a request to do a Hillary Clinton, Queen Elizabeth II video on how to do their speaking styles. Apparently the John F. Kennedy slash Margaret Thatcher video was so popular, uh, I guess, amongst like the people I sent it to. Anyway, so I have another request from the same friend who's going to the wedding, as we mentioned. How do you have dinner table conversations at the wedding? That's a new question altogether, isn't it, hon? Yes, it is. So this is what we do. Uh, we are taking Hillary Clinton, and we're taking Queen Elizabeth II, and we're going to do their voices. Now, we're going to start with Hillary Clinton. Now, Hillary Clinton, I mean, using the context of calming down a crisis, that's that's uh, the context we're going to use this. Because think about it, if you're going to a wedding, what can go wrong, right? There's not been a thousand movies after that entire concept. Uh, so what can go wrong before the wedding? You know, oh my god, the dress is on, you know, is covered in mud or something like that. Oh no, what are we going to do? So, uh, yeah, those people in those situations are straight people have to consider these things. So, Hillary Clinton, we're going to do the same thing as, as we did with Margaret Thatcher, but we're going to give her a little context first, because Hillary Clinton's context is important. Hillary Clinton grew up in a world and made her career in a world where she was always cut off by men. Because she's a woman, and she's a uppity woman, if you know what I mean. She's, you know, she, she's, oh, yeah, yeah, she, she fucking, she, she's an uppity woman. What a, what a broad, right? You know, like that. So men would cut her off before she's, fin before she's finished speaking. Not so much when she was first lady, but certainly after they would cut her off, they would interrupt her, right? Before she was finished speaking, she wasn't done with her thought yet. And so that informs how she's speaking. Remember, you have to get into their heads before you speak like them. So, in the context of Hillary Clinton, you have to get into the head of someone who has to fight for every word and edgewise against a man because you're a woman in a man's world. Now, if I'm making a point to you, um, Hillary Clinton will do this. She will, uh, she'll make a point, but as she's speaking, she'll pause for thought, as we often do. And a man will go to start speaking then because she's a woman. You just sort of overlook everything she has to say when you're a man. And so, they start speaking, and then she's not done with the thought yet. And so she goes to continue her thought, but then suddenly she's a woman who's interrupting. Then she's a nag, right? Then she's shrill. But she really, she just wasn't finished speaking. So what she does is this. Ah, because she doesn't want to fill that space with nothing. Because if she does, then you'll think she's finished speaking. As a man, you'll cut her off. That's why she speaks like that. But the only thing worse than not having anything in that space would be to have something dumb in that space. So she's using that time to think about what she wants to say in her answer. And so she's doing more than you will ever have to do, more than I will probably ever have to do. She's calculating so many different things at once as she's trying to answer a question. What's the right answer to the question? What is the proper way to put that to people? What's the way that people are then going to understand what's the real truth of the matter? How is this going to play in the press? What are they going to say about this? Is this going to help me or hurt me politically? Is this going to be at my disadvantage later on? All at the same time and more that she has to calculate. And so what we're going to do, we're going to do the same thing as we did with Margaret Thatcher. We're going to bring a voice up here like this. Right, very, very high, like Margaret, right? But we're gonna go very, very high, like Margaret Thatcher, do up here. No, 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 but we're gonna make it American, and then we're gonna make it American, and we're gonna make it from Chicago. And then suddenly, here's Hillary Clinton. I, I, I wasn't actually finished speaking yet, Bill. I would, would tell you that Donald Trump, I respect his children greatly, <laughs> and she also has that, get that little, like, giddy laugh. Because Hillary's always had this laugh, sort of like a guffaw, right? Like a horse laughing, like, Hee-haw! like that, like a donkey. No offense, Hillary. But you do. Uh, own it, girl. Uh, but uh, what Hillary will do is that um, she will uh, do this little giddy sort of like, Hee! in her voice. I don't know why she does that. But I think she does it because she's genuinely giddy. Or she's trying to, you know, deer caught in the headlights. She doesn't know the answer to the question. And she doesn't know how to pause. And she's like, uh, I see you know, like that. Like, I often do that. Sorry. I do. But, uh, so Hillary Clinton, we're going to go back up here. We're going to make her from Chicago, just like this down here. We're going to bring her right back up here to Margaret Thatcher. Very, very hot. Very, very hot. Margaret Thatcher, yeah. Very hot. And then we're going to make her American. We're going to come back down. Now, here's Hillary Clinton. Now, I'm Hillary Clinton. I am running for president of the United States of America. You know, Bill and I, uh, we were, I think we were watching The Wizard of Oz that night. And I said, hey, Bill, you know, I could be president. And he said, 
whatever Bill said. So there you go. There's Hillary Clinton. Now, in the context of, I'm going to speak later. So in the context of uh, Hillary Clinton, just to say in character, so I don't lose the voice as I'm trying to give you this example, uh, we have to calm people down. It's a crisis. The bride is freaking out at the wedding. you got to calm her down. Honey, my dear, I've been through this before. As you well know, Bill and I, we've been married for something odd thousand years. And, you know, in that time, if I had a nickel for every single time that I would have had a mishap, I would be a millionaire. So we're calming people down. It's not that bad. Just remember, it's not that bad. And so, although you are freaking out, I got to tell you, you will be all right. Everything is fine. Nobody panic. I am in charge. We will solve this. We will solve this together so all of our children can grow up to his or her own God-given potential. Hillary Clinton. So, uh, the next is Queen Elizabeth II. Now, Queen Elizabeth II is a higher pitch, naturally, than Hillary Clinton and Margaret Thatcher. So, uh, and then we're doing this in context of dinner table conversation, which Queen Elizabeth certainly has a lot of. Your Majesty, Mom. So, let's do this. Uh, we have Hillary Clinton. We have Hillary Clinton. Now we're going right back over. We can start up high. Remember up high. Even if you're a male. If you're a male, you start up high. Oh, he's even calm him down like Margaret Thatcher gets calmed down before she calls Comcast customer service on the phone. Margaret calms down. Right, so we're going to take from Hillary Clinton. We're going to go right over to England and we're going to go back. To Margaret Thatcher for a second. Because Margaret needs to get shrill. We're going to get high up here. And we're going to make a higher pitch. And we're going to princess it. Remember, royalty is a different motivation than is politics. And so we're going to age her a little bit. She's going to get jowly as we get down. The glory face, right? And then suddenly we are here. We are down here too. And my husband and I are deeply touched by the welcome we've received from all of you here around the world. We've had so many letters. This is very, very inspiring. I'd also like to point out that the Game Boy Color was a remarkable advent and achievement. And all the people and men and women of these islands, I can tell you that when the Xbox 10,000 one day comes out, that I hope it is only outmatched by the PlayStation 20,000. Thank you. Queen Elizabeth II. Now, in the terms of dinner table conversation, you have, oh, no, well, dogs and horses. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, but um, you, you, you have to remember that she doesn't... Um, and that she won't say anything that takes a side. Because there's an impartiality to her that most of us, and I don't, I personally embrace, so I'm, I'm familiar with it, but you probably aren't. And so you're not taking a side anything. So you have to pivot in your brain to other things. You have to find the overarching sort of thing that unites you all or the overarching thing. And if you can't find that, then dogs and horses and what's on dinner and how's the weather and how that thing Yankees. And so, but she's a master at it. And so, and she, and, and don't think of that's just anodyne. It's not. It's very diplomatic. In a moment of tense negotiation, a queen like that, royalty, who commands respect, and you must, and you must pay her respect. She's used to respect. You must pay her respect. So that's automatically built into how she speaks. Is the respects? I don't have to. I don't. I'm not like Hillary Clinton. I don't have to fight for your attention. And I'm not Margaret Thatcher trying to get things done and make sure that you know that I have authority. And I'm not John F. Kennedy trying to inspire a nation. The respect is already built in. Your Majesty, Queen Elizabeth II, it's already built in. So she can just speak to you, matter of fact, I'm playing it, playing it. everything's calm and great. Everything's always great. She's happy and glorious all the time. Remember that. So that's how you act in dinner table conversation. And so... You said, well, you know, I hate the job that Joe Biden is doing. And Donald Trump, man, he's just the greatest president ever. And then you have this guy over here. Well, Donald Trump's a criminal. The insurrections and all these other things. And, and oh, my God, my God the, the list goes on and on. And then, well, yeah, rah, 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 and then, yeah, rah, rah, and Queen Elizabeth's here in the, in the center. A dinner table conversation. How do you calm this down? Because you can do the Hillary Clinton calm down, but it won't work in this situation, especially with the guy who likes Trump. And so what you do, really, and so what you do is this. 
Find, remember, be impartial. Find the overarching thing that unites you all together. Yeah. I remember, I almost, I almost lost Queen Elizabeth there. We have to get her back, so let's go all the way back up. Margaret Thatcher, very, very high. Hillary Clinton up here, and we have to go higher pitch, and higher pitch up here. And uh, Johnny Donaldson, a little bit, no offense, I hate that word, but no offense, Johnny Donaldson, a little bit, and do you know that I really do quite think that Mr. Trump is actually a rather unique person in how he speaks, how he looks at situations, is actually a rather unique way, and I think that's because he is an outsider, isn't he? And do you know, uh, Mr. Biden, I think he's a charming individual, don't you agree? I think he's certainly a charming man. He certainly has an appeal. It's almost like a little boy rolling around and, and, and going a little bonkers, like a little boy. He's very excited to be there. It's, very, it's, it's easy to get caught up in Mr. Biden's enthusiasm. And over Mr. Trump, you know, it's very hard not to be frustrated, I think, with politics in any situation, any country. But I think Mr. Trump certainly spoke his mind, and I think that he continues to speak his mind. And aren't we all grateful for that? He could very well try to be as fake as possible, but no, he's not. This is his personality. There is something there to appreciate in Donald Trump. And one cannot forget that he also got North Korea to back down from nuclear weapons. That's unheard of. He also got peace in the Middle East. And an agreement through words, all your democratic presidents did not. And Mr. Biden over here was one of the first people to stand with, the, with women, the Violence Against Women Act. And certainly I think of these two men who love their country very much. I think we can all agree that although politics must stop at the water's edge, that it should not stop all of us from joining with one another, not seeing one another as neighbors. I'm sorry, as enemies, but as neighbors. Remember that us versus them does not foster anything but enmity. When you should be fostering amity. And so, that's what we find the overarching thing that unites us all together. And that is what Queen Elizabeth II is very good at doing. Respect's already built in. What are they going to do? Yell at the Queen? No. So the respect's already built in. So she's at a privilege in that. There is a privilege there. A privilege there, not of class or, or royalty, but well, actually, yeah, it is of royalty. But a privilege there to rise above and be that loftier person, above left and right, to bring them all together. That's the whole role of a monarch anyway. That's what I try to do when I do my Queen Casting in Seattle stuff. And so uh, I try to bring people together uh, and be that voice because I don't see that voice in politics. And so uh, those are your two examples of uh, uh, to build on the video from earlier today of um, when we had John F. Kennedy speaking literally from the heart. Remember, you have your capital letter I. Starts here, you have to feel it resonate here. Up here. All right, all right. Almost said Beth Thatcher there. And then Margaret Thatcher, she's very, very high up here. With all these voices, if you're a man, you must start up here, right? And then work your way back down to their town. But you have to go up and then down. That's how you have to do it. Kind of like church, you know? <laughs> or temple. Uh, up, down, stand, sit. Up, down, shh. Bacon, tomato, lettuce, pray. All right, so, uh, so, um, uh, peace be with you. Um, that being said, so we had that. We had Margaret Thatcher. Margaret Thatcher's up here. She's very shrill, calling up call her customer service on the phone. But Margaret calms down. And when she calms down, she gets that sexy, husky voice. Learning to use sex, even as a woman in an, an admirable age, the same age as Queen Elizabeth II. She's learned still to use sex in her voice, if not in action or behavior, but in her voice. John F. Kennedy's inspiring a nation. Hillary Clinton is calming people down. And Queen Elizabeth II is trying to unite people together who would otherwise not be united. And that is how you can survive, at least for my friend, a wedding. With, uh, you have uh, public speaking, you have to give your speech, you have to give your, uh, there's Kennedy and Thatcher, you know? You also have uh, Hillary Clinton to calm down crises before the wedding, and you also have Queen Elizabeth II for that dinner table conversation stuck between two people you don't know who don't agree. Mm-mm, girl. That's how we do it. That's how we do it here in Seattle, Washington. The greatest city in Seattle, Washington. And this has been the Cast and George slash Katie Evans slash Our Majesty slash our real, actual, literal grace, thank you, Sealand, uh, of the Duke, um, uh, of through Sealand, uh, um, uh, and uh, uh, Lord through Scotland. Uh, but this has been your master class in how to 
speak well and communicate well. Maybe we'll have another episode if you want to send me a message as to who you want me to do next. You can also tip me, by the way. I like tips. These things don't cost anything to make, but the talent certainly does <laughs> take time. Your time is money, as Hillary would never say. Donald Trump might say that. We'll have to work on him for next time. Oh, gosh. Well, he's a, bit of, he's a harder one. Though him and Bernie Sanders are very identical almost in how they speak. You never think that, but they are. I'll see you later.